guys, welcome along to DT TV with Sim. Today we're going to be looking at setting up a drawing sheet for your orthographic drawings on SOLIDWORKS. The sheet you're going to be producing will look like this one here. So there's an example on Moodle. Uh, we need to look at this bit in more detail. So there's another file on Moodle which will allow you to see the enlarged view which is here. It's a city and guilds course so we need to set this box up and you'll use this template over and over again. The idea being that you then go back, you edit this box and that's mainly what this tutorial will involve today. So, this is where we need to get to. I'm going to move that to a different screen and you'll see that I'll add pieces as I go along. Uh, and I'm going to then have SOLIDWORKS open. In SOLIDWORKS I go to the new file. I've got three choices, part, assembly and drawing. I'm going to choose drawing because that's what we're doing today. Click OK. Now in your box, mine's defaulting to the A4 ANSI landscape because I've already been playing with SOLIDWORKS today. Yours may well be higher up the list, so simply scroll your way down. The other option is that you might only have a very short list of options here. If that's the case, you need to uncheck this box which says only standard views, so it gives you the views you want. So I can go through here. Obviously we're doing an A4 sheet, so it's an A4 ANSI landscape. You should repeat this process for an A3 sheet uh, later on when you come to do the required sheet for A3. Gives me a preview here, I can see what I'm getting. It's the closest one, uh, or close enough to the one that I want. So I'm going to click OK. It gets me here. I'm not putting a model in, so I'm going to close that straight away. The first thing I want to do is to modify this sheet. At the moment, you'll see that everything is grey, and I'm not able to click on anything. What I'm going to do, right click, and in the right click options, we have Edit Sheet Format. You'll get well used to using this button. I'll click that now. Now you'll notice that everything goes blue. Because everything's blue, it means that we are in a position that we can then edit it. So for instance, I can go up with the trim tools up here and I can use it as power trim and normal uh, trim to closest. But so with the trim to closest, I could just trim out individuals. Power trim is also pretty good as well because I can keep my finger down and I can then trim out multiple lines and get rid of the bits I don't want. It's a very good and effective way of deleting stuff. Uh, before I carry on with that, the first thing I need to do is to just de determine how big the my box in the corner is going to be. So it's going to sit in this corner here. The issue that lots of you will find is that if you make this box too big, then it's going to mean that you take up too much of the sheet and you actually struggle to fit your drawings on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick one of these pieces of text. Now this one here, I can drag and drop over here. If I double click it, I can then change what it's called. So I'm going to change this to City and Guilds. Having done that, I'm going to look at this box here. Now, 24 is too big, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to drop it down to a size 18. 18 is absolutely fine, and I'm going to bring it down into this corner. Now, this distance between this edge here and this edge here is going to dictate how big my box is. So as you can see, it's nice and tidy, nice and small. Then what I'm going to do is I'm then going to start thinking about how I can then utilize these other areas. So sitting guilds, and then I need my projection view and the various other bits and bobs. So it's a clearly going to be in a box shape with that in mind. I obviously can remove most of these. My suggestion though to all of you is if you don't want to have to type all these over and over again, you just simply move the majority of these bits of text out of the way. Um, because what we can do is we can reorganize uh, them back into the box that we'll end up drawing later on. So what I'm going to do is move a fair amount of this stuff. I could just drag around the number of items and then just drag it out of the way. Um, as it says. Um, some of the items move, some of them don't. Um, it's easier to read them individually. Equally what I could do is if I don't want something I can click on it and then I can just press delete on the keyboard and I can delete them out. So if you've got too many words we can get rid of those as well. I'm going to use scale. One I have to have a scale on my sheet. We don't need a sheet number so I can remove that. I'll relieve the A4. We don't need a drawing number because we don't do that. Um, at any stage in this I can zoom in and out so I can see what I've got. Title is obviously one of the boxes I need, so I'm going to move it in. Do not scale drawing, I'm going to keep that one. Um, I believe I need to move over here. So I'm now going to go to the drawing tools. Standard drawing tools are ideal here, so I'm going to use the line tool. I'm going to come up to this corner and I'm going to drag now. Now when I come down you'll notice that there is a yellow box with a straight line. Um, that means that my line is straight at 90 degrees to everything else. I'm going to come up I'm going to double click to get rid of that line, but I'm going to roll back over here, get my orange point, and come to this side. Double click. Every time I double click, it removes what I, um, I was doing previously. I'm going to use my trim tool, and I'm going to trim out 
next time my lines using trim to place is as we said it's the most accurate tool to use so there we go I'm going to trim out those lines I'm going to now add in a variety of lines and move forwards my suggestion is that um, you follow these steps watch what I'm doing as I move along and then I will chime back in with things that I need to say as I go along Okay, so now we've got to the section where I've got quite a few of the aspects in place. You'll notice that as I've gone through this process, uh, I have kept a lot of my text and I'm starting to drag and drop it back in to pre-populate it. What I can do is obviously I can double click it and I can uh, do various things so it resizes as you've just seen me do. Um, I can also press Control C and Control V on the keyboard and let them paste it in. What that allows me to do is to move the bits I want, clearly it wants me to move the top one so I'll do it the other way around. Um, so I've got the name and I can use that as my title on my sheet. Uh, I'll pop my name in here. So you obviously do the same um, and what you'll do is you'll get it so it fits. Obviously the larger it is, the easier it is for me to see. Um, with this one you'll notice that we've got surface finishes, tolerance of veneering and when I look back at the original you'll notice there are tolerances and dimensions plus or minus 0 0.1, minus 1, 1 1.5. I'm going to add those in now. So what we'll do is simply click on it and then I can just pop those in. So again my plus or minuses simply means that it can be bigger or smaller than the specified uh, aspects by this tolerance. Um, so my surface finish is 0 0.1. My tolerances are going to be um, 
side. Our linear is also going to be the same, uh, but it's not linear, it's cast. Uh, cast is going to be plus plus slash minus 1.5 and the angular is plus or minus 0.1 just that space pop that in so tidy it up now in this gap you'll notice that there is the pro projection view now the projection view is showing us how we are actually seeing the shape what it is is it's a cone on its side the top chopped off uh, you have to draw that precisely and you have to draw it in the box so in the past I've seen students who try and draw it elsewhere on the sheet the problem with that is that you then end up with a sheet where um, you can't then drag and drop it back in SOLIDWORKS at this stage doesn't really like you dragging and dropping stuff back in so I need my date in there uh, the date by the way when you pop it in you don't actually have to write a date in there that is actually there for me to use because what I'll do is I will date these when I sign them and mark them off um, simply to allow me to make sure that I've got a correct date so I'm going to zoom in there uh, that one's going to say check so it means that I will sign that for you uh, again I'm going to copy paste and pick the right one this time thank you SOLIDWORKS nuclear and approve okay so we've got most of the major elements in here as you can see it's A4 uh, we do need to have scale scale something you're gonna have to watch as you do each of your sheets they need to be correct uh, if your scale is wrong it's one of the things that means you have to do it again let's have a look we've then got our Material and finish. Uh, we'll get those over and then we'll come in and we'll actually modify those. So the finish, I'm just going to put uh, finish RA. We use RA as our quality of finish and we'll have discussions in class about what that means. Uh, in the material, we will have material. Now remember we need to be specific, so when you do this I don't want to see you coming up with a material such as plastic or something like that because that's no good to us. Finally, let's have a look at revision, so I can grab that one there, bring it down. Uh, early on you'll have seen me neatening up the boxes and getting things so they're in the right way. Um, I don't know why I'm just clicking all the wrong things, it's because it's a little bit fiddly. And that one in there is going to be revisions. Basically, I'll tick that if, they, if you need to do something. So, what we've got now is we've got a couple of bits here which we can delete and get rid of this, and we'll go back to that projection view. I need to have the word projection, so here I'll control and then paste. So, I'll click on that, and I'm going to move that up to here to write my word projection. And now I'm going to draw it in this box. So I'm zooming in to make my life nice and easy. First things first, center line from the flyer. That's going to give me a line which goes across the middle. Double click. So to remind you, I'm doing this part here. So circle, circle, just draw a nice center line. And then I'm going to have these lines around it. So I'm going to first of all move my projection uh, slightly more out of the way to give myself some more room. And I'm going to just choose the circle. I'm going to roll over and I'm going to draw my first circle and then back to the middle and draw a second circle. The exact precise dimensions of that are not necessarily accurate. Um, there are no dimensions as such. Drag my line through, back to my center line tool, up to the middle. Now you notice I've not clicked, I'm just rolling my mouse over and it selects those aspects. If it's not selecting those aspects, the likelihood is you're too far away. Back to the line tool. Now if I roll over to here and I haven't clicked anything, I'm just rolling, click, come down, and what I want is to meet up with this point. Now you may find, depending on how close other aspects of your work are, that it's a bit tricky in doing this. So zooming in again can help. 
and all I'm doing is I'm making sure that they line up for the other aspects. My tail here is too long, so I'm just going to draw a quick line there, double click, up to trim lenses, trim that, trim that, trim that, and then zoom out. Okay, so now I've got all the aspects I need, and I'm able to do this as I go along. I've missed out the line, so I'm just going to pop that one back in. Press there, double click, zoom out. Now there's a few lines down here missing, but that's not an, uh, anything that we're too fussed about. Um, we've got all the details we need in there. What we're now going to do is we're going to right click on the sheet, edit sheet, and we go back to this. At this stage, what we can now do is we can now add our, dra our drawings. 